It's uh, brilliant. Genius. These filmmaking siblings are a creative force to be reckoned with. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Coen Brothers movies. I think that's the shit, man. The raw intelligence. For this list, we're taking a look at the best and most critically acclaimed films to come from these directing dynamos. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh... Your opinion, man. With a distinctive cinematic style ranging from the quirky to the compelling, the Coen brothers have provided us with some true gems over the years. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. Number 10, Raising Arizona. Short for Edwina, turn to the right. Good flower you are. Just a little desert flower. One of the Coen's earlier films, Raising Arizona, helped establish the brothers' recurring elements and unique sense of humor. Son, you got a panty on your head. Just drive fast, eh? A young ex-con and his police officer wife are so desperate for a child that they see kidnapping as their only solution. You go right back up there and get me a toddler. I need a baby high. They got more than they handled. After nabbing one of the quintuplets belonging to a prominent local businessman, the couple is plagued by a persistent bounty hunter, shady friends, and their own sense of right and wrong. I'll be taking these huggies and uh, whatever cash you got. A cult favorite thanks to its quirky humor and over-the-top performances, it makes kidnapping funny. Number 9. Blood Simple. The brothers came out of the gate swinging with their first film together. Gave me a little Pearl Hound 38 for our first anniversary. Uh-huh. Figure I better leave before I use it on him. With a penchant for noir, this gritty story tells the tale of a jilted lover, murder, and a double cross. Well, I'll be damned. Made on a tight budget, the film is still able to set the blueprint for the Coens' distinctive visual style. Featuring Joel Coen's wife, Frances McDormand, in her debut role, it was a quick favorite with critics and developed a faithful fan following thanks to its startling violence and comedy. Number 8, Inside Lewin Davis. You've probably heard that one before. So it was never new and it never gets old and it's a folk song. This film gives us a glimpse into the life of a down-on-his-luck folk singer as he struggles to gain footing in the 1960s music industry. This is it anyway, it's... Um... That'll be five dollars. Technically homeless and somewhat aimless, he's an artist who refuses to compromise his integrity, sometimes to his own detriment. Everything you touch turns to shit! By like King Midas' idiot brother. As one of the Coen brothers' most contemporary offerings, it's both comical and gloomy. It's, it's a little careerist. And it's a little square. And it's a little sad. I'm sad? You're the one who's not getting anywhere. But its intelligence and emotive vibe are proof of the Coens' continued evolution and skill. Plus, there's an adorable cat. Where's Mundfink? He teach you how to do it. You two have some sick sex thing. Sex? He's a man. We wrestled. Number seven, Barton Fink. With three Oscar nods and three awards won at the Cannes Film Festival, Barton Fink was a critical smash for the Coen brothers, although not a commercial one. We're only interested in one thing. Can you tell a story, Bart? Can you make us laugh? Can you make us cry? Can you make us want to break out? Enjoy a song. Is that more than one thing? Okay. A successful playwright is given the opportunity to become a Hollywood scriptwriter. Ted Holcomb said I should drop by this morning to see about Ted the... Act. Huh? No, I'm a... I need Indians for a Norman Steel Western. I'm a writer. Ted Oakham. Think about that thing. Writers come and go. We always need Indians. After setting up shop in a low-key Los Angeles hotel, he soon finds that writer's block is going to be one of many obstacles. It's funny. I'm blocked up. I just feel like I need some kind of indication of what's expected. With romance, serial killers, and a looming deadline thrown into the mix, 
the film takes multiple twists and turns. Oh, I'm a writer, you monsters! I create! I create for a living! I'm a creator! I am a creator! Screw it! This is my uniform! Six, oh Brother, Where Art Thou? It's a nod towards Homer's Odyssey, complete with singing sirens and a pinch more clan. I ain't never harmed nobody. The Ulysses in this story escapes from a chain gang, along with his two convict buddies, and the trio then sets out under the pretense of finding a treasure. A million dollars. Million point two. Five hundred thousand each. Along the way, they encounter a number of characters, including a devilish sheriff and some crooked politicians. You have eluded fate and you have eluded me for the last time. Tie their hands, boy. The epic tale receives the typically quirky Coen Brothers treatment, helped along by a stunning folk soundtrack. The place where I was born in rain. The place where he Number five, Miller's Crossing. I suppose you think you raised hell. Sister, when I've raised hell, you'll know it. It's a gangster movie done the Cohen way, which means an intricate plot, some majorly cool cinematography, and moments of unexpected levity. I told you so. The story centers on two rival factions stuck in a battle for control of a city. His fancy pants, all his. The main character, Tom Reagan, plays both sides against each other in a bid to not only survive the fray, but to come out on top. Don't get hysterical. I've had enough excitement for one night without a dame going all weepy in me. Harkening back to film noir and gangster films of yore, it's a movie that cinema enthusiasts are bound to appreciate. Tell Leo he's not God on the throne. It's just a cheap political boss with more hair tonic than brains. Number four, True Grit. They tell me you're a man with true grit. What do you want, girl? Speak up at supper time. It's a revenge tale with the Coen brothers at the helm and one of their first straightforward experiments with genre. That is quite a horse. I will give you $10 for him. From the money you stole from me? A remake of the 1969 classic, the story centers on a teen girl looking to avenge her father's death. What's your name, girl? My name is Maddie Ross. We're located in Yale County. My mother's at home looking after my sister Victoria and my brother little Frank. She enlists the aid of a hard scrabble U.S. Marshal named Rooster Cogburn, and the two set out after her father's killer. All I need is your silence. Widely praised by critics, the Coen's True Grit remake garnered 10 Academy Award nominations, even though it's a straight-up Western without their trademark quirky style. That kind of been in front of them cheap shells on me again. I thought you were going to say the sun was in your eyes. That is to say, your eye. Number three, The Big Lebowski. Did I urinate on your rug? I mean, did you personally come and pee on my rug? Hello, do you speak English, sir? Parla usted inglés? It's a comical story of mistaken identity, kidnapping, and bowling. Woo! I'm slamming him tonight. After slacker Jeff Lebowski, otherwise known as The Dude, gets mistaken for a millionaire of the same name, he gets tangled up in a web of ransoms, trophy wives, and deceit. They did not receive the money, you nitwit! They did not receive the money! Her life was in your hands! This is our concern, dude. No, man, nothing is f here. Slightly campier than some of their other projects, Lebowski delivers genuine laughs with a side of whodunit, and has developed a pretty substantial cult following thanks to its characteristically eccentric Coen Brothers plot and characters. Are we gonna split hairs here? No. no. Am I wrong? Well, he, he Man, they I'm were nihilists, man. Huh? They kept saying they believed in nothing. Nihilists. <laughs> Number two, Fargo. Something down there, Chief? No, I just think I'm gonna barf. Jeez. You okay, Margie? 
a pregnant police chief, played by Frances McDormand, is investigating the deaths of two motorists when she stumbles across a kidnapping scheme gone wrong. Get out the defensive wound. Oh, yeah? Where's the state trooper? Back there, a good piece in the ditch next to his prowler. Okay. Turns out the events surrounding the homicide were set in motion by a desperate family man who plots to have his wife kidnapped for the ransom. <laughs> set in Minnesota, the film satirizes small town life. Looks like she's gonna turn cold tomorrow. Oh yeah, got a front coming in. Yeah, you got that right. But also offers up brutal violence that would only be acceptable between moments of humor. Happy now, asshole! Darkly funny and brilliantly written, Fargo was a critical darling with multiple Academy Award nominations. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I'm saying, sometimes the more you look, the less you really know. Don't you want somebody to love? Don't oh, oh, you uh, need somebody Nailing it down. Yeah. So important. Who do you work for? Who are you? I'm just... Linda Litsky. Oh, that gag's got whiskers on it. Uh-oh. He ain't biting, Benny. She's losing him, Lou. Maybe he's wise. He don't look wise. And we have one dishonorable mention as well. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm not bereaved. Though it is so kind of you to inquire, the hearse is simply a vehicle commodious enough to accommodate all the members of our ensemble. Number one. You going to shoot me? That depends. No country for old men. Do you see me? Set in West Texas and based on the Cormac McCarthy novel, the story follows a hunter who happens upon a fortune in drug money and runs for his life with the cash. If I don't come back, you tell mother I love her. Your mother's dead, Llewellyn. Well, then I'll tell her myself. But he's pursued by one of the scariest hitmen ever captured on film. I know that. I've seen him. Portrayed expertly by Javier Bardem. Would you hold still, please, sir? Praised by both critics and audiences, No Country for Old Men went on to win four Oscars probably because it surpasses its status as a cat and mouse chase to become a fascinating character study. You know what date is on this coin? No. 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here. And now it's here. And it's either heads or tails. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite Coen Brothers film? Give me the broad outlines. I'm sitting in the audience. The lights go down. Capital logo comes up. Yeah, right. For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Oh, look at me. I'm rambling again. Well, I hope you folks enjoyed yourselves. Catch you later on down the trail.